All right, we are pleased to have Greg Brown joining us this morning. I've had the opportunity to work with Greg uh, a few times, and we've had him to the Excellent Squared Academy session in Toronto on change. He is the author of a book called Ready, Set, Change Again. So, Greg, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Perhaps you could just, uh, we could start by just telling me a bit about yourself and tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. I really got interested in working with people around change when I was about 10 years old. I was uh, teaching some friends math and I thought, oh, I, and they were learning it. And I'm not a mathematician. And it was interesting because I that 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 bug bit me around helping people change, helping people adapt to change. And as I grew up and, you know, I started as part of the team that opened the first wave of Starbucks stores here in Canada in Vancouver nearly 30 years ago. Then I morphed into organizational life as one tends to do and led a number of uh, large scale change initiatives and eventually ended up you know, in a leadership role. And uh, now I'm very lucky to be doing the work I love in my own company. Oh, that's perfect. Now tell me, that that's all stuff that I can find on your re resume. Perhaps tell me something that people wouldn't know about you. Well, probably one of the most interesting things that's related to this work is uh, for a period of time before I went into large organizations, I was working in healthcare and teaching sexual health to people such as nuns. And what's interesting about that, I know it's one of those, uh, you know, disconnects, like you're teaching sexual health to nuns. Well, these nuns were working with people that were living on the street. So injection drug users, sex trade workers, and things like this. And they needed to be able to uh, teach them about that. And what was fascinating about it was it really set the stage for me to learn how to create positive change with people. Because if I could work with people, say like nuns, and you know, work with other individuals uh, in that environment, to create the space for them to learn and change, then I figured I could almost work anywhere. <laughs> You're not wrong. That's uh, well. Thank you for that. That and and uh, interesting work to be sure. Um, tell if you could just tell. Uh, give me a sense for what motivated you to write this book. Well, I've been, you know, out in the world speaking on change management and change leadership and resilience for many, many years and you know, doing the research and then doing also the management of that in terms of actually running, you know, change initiatives. I found that people would be coming up to me after keynote events and saying, I want to know more about this, or I want to learn more about this change model. And I decided to write a book that incorporated, you know, some of my thinking about change and also highlighted the different change models that are out there. Because one of my beliefs is one size does not fit all, and that does not denigrate any change model that's out there. But I really believe for most of us that are on the ground in organizations, whether we're influencing others during change or you know, overseeing large scale change initiatives, that we need to pick and choose the best from each model that will suit the initiative we're working on. Because there are some commonalities, but there's a lot of differences. And I wanted also to include ones that people might not be that familiar with, that didn't focus just on how to manage people through change, the part around how do I actually get people on board with my ideas and how do I move them down the path? Because doing a plan is really easy. You know, I can teach anybody to do a plan. Leading your people from A to B, that's where the complexity arises. And I wanted to have a book that uh, incorporated that piece and I wanted it to be like a handbook. So it's only a hundred pages and I wanted it to be that way. And and one of, the, one of my clients, uh, VP said to me, you know, I just keep it on my desk and when my staff come in with questions about change, I just open it up. And that's what I wanted it to be. I didn't want it to be like most business books, which tend to sit on a shelf and we don't read. Gotcha. And, and that's what I found about it is it's very accessible. And it's one of those books that doesn't take a long time to read. It's a uh, chalk block full of uh, information. And then it, it doubles as a reference guide after the fact. Uh, and you can use it in real well, and that said, you know, for me, sometimes it's not about reading a book cover to cover, right? It's about going, you know, opening it up and seeing what inspires you at that moment or going through, uh, you know, the table of contents and see what's relevant for you to know at that moment as well.
Well, and it's interesting, and that segues into my next question, because as I mentioned, there is a lot in the book, and there's a lot of actionable information. So when you wrote the book, what is it? Your, what was your intention around what do you want people to be able to do as a result of having picked up your book and read it? Well, there are a few things. I think I wanted, you know, if we look at it from an individual perspective, and when people have read this who are going through lots of change, they've said things to me like, this helped me really feel okay about change, or it helped me, you know, feel normal about what I'm going through with this. Because there's a part of the book that talks about that. And and you know, when we go through change, sometimes we think we're we're the only ones going through it, and you know, this is really difficult and this is really hard, and it very well may be difficult and hard. Yet if if you can feel like, oh, it's okay, I'm just in this place. And you know, it's really about preparing people i find to be unprepared you know we're, we can't be prepared for everything but we need to know that stuff is going to happen that we're not going to be sure how to handle and that's okay you know so that's sort of one piece um the second reason or, or the second piece that i really wanted people to get from it is that you know from an organizational perspective there are lots of options to help people move down the path of change. And that if someone is negative, and we all have to work with, you know, what we would call, say, label negative people, sometimes they're just skeptical. And, you know, I really wanted to give people these different lenses to go, well, if someone's skeptical, maybe if I answer their questions, they'll get on board the change. Maybe if I include this piece of, you know, this question in my change plan, that will help these people get on board. Because that's our whole goal at work is to be as efficient as we can to move people down that path of change. And I really, you know, the the you know, the framework and some of the stories that are in the book come from some of my more, I would say, obscure experiences, as well as, you know, my work experiences, but some of the work I did say with working with offenders and people who lived in prison. And that, you know, if if people can change in that environment, we can certainly change in organizational life. And even though I worked in that environment 25 years ago, you know, I've been able to apply that to you know the current state so you know some of the principles are stuff like you know everybody has a choice you know we all have a choice with how we respond to change um you can't make people do anything and if we really want people to change we need to separate that good old action from the person and you know the other piece that i hear and this i hear this from leaders and you know frontline people and middle managers that you know, the excuses that come up for not dealing with change. And I have my own share of excuses and, you know, change can be crappy and can impact me in a negative way. And, and you know, people will say they're really change ready. And yet we all know no one likes change that has a negative impact on them. Yet what we know is people can show up and do their best regardless of what circumstances are going around them. And I think that that's a really key point, because if, if you know, guys in jail can do that, and I've seen people in banks do it, and people in associations, and hospitals and not-for-profits do it, then we can all do it. Yeah, that's a, and that's, and, that's a very good and practical point. Um, that a big, and I, that was one of my biggest takeaways from your book, was uh, really, uh, change starts between your ears. And unless you get that right to get things going, then all the change models and everything that comes downstream of that uh, won't work. You have to start first with that mindset for, and, and an understanding of a willingness to be able to do this. Well, I think you're right, Mark. I think, you know, everything is about mindset. You know, you can't learn new skills. You can't learn practice. You cannot be a good leader. I do not care who you are. If you are not in the mindset to create the space to learn, to change, to grow for yourself and for others, you can't be a good leader. Just because you're a good accountant doesn't mean you're going to be a good accounting leader of finance. And, and we can get stuck, I think, in views we see of leaders and media and on television, wherever else we've learned from leaders around not to do. And, you know, and the things that we forget are some of the most basic. You know, as, you know nobody leaves their job because their leader can't do a budget or their leader doesn't do a plan well. 
people leave their job because they don't like the person, you know, they might not feel like they're contributing anymore, or they might have simply, you know, outgrown the job. But if you look at the research, if people are leaving work, you know, leaving a job to go somewhere, number one reason is usually because the relationship with the leader. And that's why I close the book with something that seems really simple, but we forget, which is all about being, and it sounds trite, and I'll explain this, where we say, you know, always be polite and courteous to others. And in the real world, that's hard. And I don't mean it in a trite way. What I mean is, as leaders, if we're being quite and courteous, it means we're not micromanaging people. We're not telling them how wrong and bad they are. It doesn't mean we don't correct people, but it means how we do it, how we show up at work, how we engage with our team, 90% of the time, because there's always going to be that 10% where you're in a bad mood, crap has happened, your boss is yelling at you. And I'm not saying, you know, put roses and lollipops and sunshine on bad days. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is ways to get through this and people will be more engaged in your change processes if you do that. And I saw that power working with hardcore prisoners in jail. That it, the difference in treatment they would treat you when you treated them politely and courteously versus if you micromanaged, if you yelled at them, if you came down on them. And it doesn't mean don't correct people. You still have to correct people and move them to the right path. But what it means is how you show up. And it's just like what you said, Mark. It's all about that mindset. And that, to me, is really where change comes down. Perfect. Well, Greg, I really appreciate you joining us this morning. Now, the book is called Ready, Set, Change Again. Take Control of Change Before It Takes Control of You. Um, that's, you know, people can get the book. How do they get in touch with you? Well, probably a couple of ways are good. Um, LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn under Greg Brown. So just do a search there and I'll pop up. As well, they can go through my website, www.greggbrown, -E B-R-O-W-N. So it's gregbrown.ca. So it's not .com, it's .ca, www.gregbrown.ca. Perfect. Well, listen, Greg, uh, on behalf of everybody at Excellent Squared Academy, I want to end everybody listening. I want to thank you very much for giving us an insight into this book, a little kind of teaser, if you will, about some of the core things you can expect out of this book and for taking your time this morning to spend it with us. Mark, thanks. It's been totally my pleasure. All right. Take care.